I'm Shirley. Welcome to the Shirley Rider Show, where I'm going on a journey to find weird, wonderful and exciting things like surfing. I'm going to be talking to surfers at Mount Monganui Beach. I will be talking to magicians, I will be talking to musicians, artists, counsellors and healers and anything I can find for your viewing entertainment. Right, let's go. On the show today we have Rod Roscoe. So welcome to the show Rod. Thank you. And of course uh, Rod you um, were in Palmerston North for a little while. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Palmy? Yeah, yeah. I moved to Palmy when I was 15 and um, so lived out in the country a little so I never really got around town much but um, so I never really saw any bands or anything and well bands weren't in pubs those days because it was still six o'clock closing and um, probably when I was in my um, early 20s 21 my girlfriend now my wife we were in the back of a car going to a friend's wedding in New Plymouth and I was just singing along there and she sort of said to me well hey you got a really nice voice you should go on a talent quest on yeah. Sunday nights at the Opera House. Oh, you reckon? Yeah. So, summoned up, summoned up enough courage, because I was really shy, to go along and um, it was it was really cool, because yep. you know, great acoustics in the Opera House and that, and uh, we did okay. I went in with mm. my, one of my sisters. And, um, but yeah, after that, I'm still, never really thought about singing in bands or anything until one day my mother approached me and said um, some boys from my church have a band and um, I've told them that you're a good singer and they want to meet you and I said no, I'm not interested in the boys from the church and their band. One of them, one of them actually happened to be Neil Story who turned out to be the drummer for Dragon a few years later. Um, but just a loose collection of guys and they asked me to join so yeah that was the beginnings and um, from there we went out and did a few gigs and yeah, it was quite good mm. um, private gigs and that and about this time it was when the pub started to open late mm. and bands were starting to play in pubs and um, well, after a few people leaving and joining, and um, we got offered a, a gig at the Café de Paris, which lasted for a little while. Then a little while later, we got offered a gig at the Majestic mm. in Fitz Herbert Ave. Yes. And from there, somebody must have seen us, we got offered the residency at the Albert. The band was leaving, mm. a band called Madrigal. They were leaving and uh, we were called Ebony by this time and so we got the gig at the Albert. We actually didn't even audition, we just got it. What year would that have been when you were at the Albert? I that remember the been, Albert. Yeah, it would have been 73. Wow. 73. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I left in 74, so I was the 18 months. Yeah. And so we were playing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday mm. nights and still doing our regular jobs mm. in, the, in the day. And I had a pretty dirty job and the guys used to get me amazed because I'd knock off at five o'clock, race home, jump in the bath with my little girl who was about mm. and a little mm. toddler then. And then race down to the pub and to start at seven o'clock. Mm. <laughs> And uh, so, I, I, when, when we first got this gig, um, oh, we, we were all young married mm. guys. I was the oldest by probably two or three years. And um, 18 months later, the band thing had kind of, the rock star thing, whatever you like to call it, the band had lifestyle had overtaken her and, you, and the marriages were collapsing all over the place and I thought ah, you know, I've got to get out of here so I did mm -hmm. but 
Richard Wilkins was the drummer. And he's now a big time in Aussie, but... Yeah. Um, I remember him playing at the Sound Shallows while I'm once. Oh, okay. Years ago, yeah. I was sitting outside because I had a real... I said before I had a real crush on him. So I was sitting outside the Sound Show hoping to catch a glimpse as he walked out. Is this, I, uh, I think I must have been like 11, 10 years old. Or something. Is this Sound Show in... <laughs> in Tauranga. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was up here for holiday. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, anyway. So, so he... Yeah, when I left... He got off the drums and took over lead vocals yeah. and, and um, got Barry rushed and ex-calculated risk yeah. to come on the drums. Barry rushed and up in Auckland now you see him on Channel 83 doing that record yeah. and, and video um, reviews. When I was a little wee guy I wanted to be a rock and roll singer. Yeah. That was all I wanted to be and so I'd done it, it was cool and so yeah, it was mm. all over. And um, so we moved up here in about 19, well, it was moving back for me, but right. for Cheryl it was, um, it was a new town and we moved up here. She, she got a job um, working at Gate Power in the hair salon and um, but she came home and said, oh, <coughs> the, the girl, the apprentice at work, She's, um, her, uh, her boyfriend plays in a, in a band mm -hmm. and I told them that you, you know, used to be in there. Mm -hmm. They want you to come along and check them out. I said, oh, okay. So I thought, oh, I'll go and check them out. And um, it was in the old town hall in Palmy, you know, up on the stage yeah. and it was empty and they started singing, it was just a bloody noise. Oh, so <coughs> turn it down and mm -hmm. I could have a, you know, and they were okay. So um, they asked, they came around to my place that night. Would you like? Because I did a couple of songs with them. Mm. Would you like to join our band? The the singers leaving and going to Auckland, and um, he he actually went up to Auckland to manage the rock shop. Okay. And um, I think he ended up actually being one of the owners. But so I joined up with them, and I said, now I, I just don't know where you're going to play because the pub scene in Tarong was pretty bleak, mm. and um, and it was a pub. Mm. band thing, you know, oh no, we'll just do private gigs, and I'm like, oh, mm. okay, I've never really done any of those, socials, whatever. Um, but anyway, so with, that, with those guys there, we did almost two years, and yeah. worked every bloody weekend, and um, I thought, this is all right. Then we started to get into the pubs, and a couple of different guys joined the left, and so... Was starting to change, but one night there was up up the um, Mid City Tavern. It was a band night, and our band was playing there. And I was up at the bar, and one of the guys out of the other band started conversation with me, and and um, he sort of said, "Oh, you know, well, whatever." El Campbell. Yeah. And, and he and he said, well, "Where do you live?" And he said, "Redwood Street." I said. Do you? But it ended up that he was my neighbour. Oh! It was a bloody great big Fijo hedge at the end of our <laughs> section. Yeah. And he was on the other side of it. Oh, well, that's hard case. But before before this, I'd been mowing the lawn one day and, and turned the mower off to the end of the cash and I heard this guitar going, rrr, rrr, rrr. I thought, like, shit, that guy's pretty good. Mm. Um, and that's who it was. So, a little bit of talking and then he sort of asked me to join his band, which I did, and um, we ended up playing together probably a couple of years in that thing. And What was that band? That band was called Lost Resort. Right, yeah. And we Covers band? Yeah, just yeah. covers band, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, so, once again, you have guys leaving and join in yeah. and it um, Kevin Schilling came in on the drums yep, Kevin. Kevin Schilling yep. and he, he named the band Broken Toys mm. <clears throat> when he left James, good time yeah but, yeah. I, but I found out that it wasn't really original oh <laughs> never mind <laughs> it was it's one in Brisbane well it was original around the bay <laughs> and um, 
And and then so Kevin left because he was going back to Aussie, and then um, James James Rimmer, mm-hmm. who who he he joined and he stayed with us for about five years. Yeah. Um, I didn't know Kevin was on the band. Yeah, oh, he was. Because well, I was probably yeah. still on Palmy when all that was happening. Because what year would that have been? When he when Kevin it was would on there? Would have been early nineties. Yeah, I was on Palmy still then. I didn't yeah. move up till I think. Mid yeah. 90s or something. Um, yeah, early 90s. Then Kevin came back from Australia. Right. And by this time, we had been joined by keyboard player Neil Pepper. Oh, I know Neil. Yep. And so we're going really well, but then they. Um, yeah, but he was on China Zoo, wasn't he, as well? Neil? Yeah, Neil. Would that have been after you? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Um, he was fresh in town when he came to play with us. But then he got um, he got burgled off us by, um, I think it was called China Zoo. Yeah, China Zoo. Graham Hardacre and Darren Greenslade yeah, and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they were setting up to go and do big gigs in Auckland and that, and they did a lot of school balls and that in Auckland. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they, they burgled. Neil off us and then so we thought oh, we'll just go on with it. Well, we yep. had, had another guy, we were going to go on without a keyboard player. Yeah. But we were doing a lot of Pink Floyd stuff and that. it was mm. quite hard without it. But we, uh, we had another guy come in for a while on keyboards. Didn't really. Who was that? Yeah. Can't remember. You kind of rang me up, you know. I, I was do. a keyboard player. <laughs> I, well, yeah, did we? Yeah. No, I was a party. Um, his name. It's B and A. what? Not Steve Max either. No, it was Steve Max. So this guy played keyboard and played guitar as well, and he sang. Not Gavin. No. No, no, not Gavin. Well, that's another thing. <laughs> he was a good keyboard player. Pete, when he moved up here, he was yeah. living in Te Poki, and Peter, the bass player out of our band, and me went over to Te Poki to sort of talk to him about playing our band. And um, oh, I can't remember which sequence mm. it was, but he got he was he was going to play and come to our band and play keyboard. Then he got called into side effects to play bass because oh, their bass player yes. went AWOL. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he ended so up playing keyboards. And yeah, 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 yeah. So he could have actually been yeah. in our band originally, but anyway, then we decided just to go with um, without keyboard. Right. And but we were doing a lot of grunge stuff. Mm. It was that was the flavour of the day. So there was two kind of main local bands: mm. Side Effects and us. Right. Yeah, that's right. They were doing the more boy band kind of stuff. Yeah, um, they were great too. And we were doing the more rocky kind. That's of stuff, right. You know? Yeah. And because um, that suited our, mm. our mm. kind of yeah. Thing. And. So I think it was 1999 we actually called it a day. Mm. And I think what what had happened, the guitarist, Al Campbell, said he was going going to leave, you know. And yep. I think he's had, had enough of the yeah. late nights and everything. Yeah, fair enough. And then Pete, the bass player, said, oh, well, he would, he'd have been approached by side effects. And he said, oh, well, Soon as with you guys, he said, but mm. if Elle's leaving, well, you know, yeah, okay. So then Elle decided not to leave. Oh. So we got another bass player in for a while, but it was, Bino was on the drums by this yes. time. And it was, it wasn't, the, the spirit had gone out of the band, mm. you know, and we just wanted to close it up, so we did. And um, so I went home and I thought, once again, that's the end of it for me. What am I going to do with that band gear in the garage? Um, so I, I put another ad in the Bay Trader, mm. and Tasha turned up, mm. and she was really keen and everything, and sang a couple of songs. And I said, "Not really what I was, what I was looking for, mm. but you sing so bloody good that I want to sing with you anyway, you know." Mm. So I changed the tack a little bit, and then there was another girl, Martine, who. Who did fit the bill mm. for the thing? So I was a bit mixed up anyway. But anyway, we we went on and did a 
he was here, but um, in the meantime, oh, I, I had I had set up a band a couple, couple of years earlier with Mel. Mm. She got burgled off by somebody else, which didn't work out. Oh, Todd Kinsella. Scotland Yard. Yeah, yeah. Because I went to Scotland Yard after Mel for a little while. Yeah. And uh, it didn't work out, so... But anyway, I was talking to Tasha, and I said, oh, the girl I really wanted was Mel. Mm. The girl, she said, oh, no, Mel, she's my best friend. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to sing with her. And so yeah. so we got her in instead of Martine. Right. And we were going for about three years, I think, and then they had a bit of a falling out, Mel and Tasha. And okay. then, so Mel and I went Duo. as a duo. Yeah. For probably ten years. Wow, I didn't realise that was that long. What I enjoy about it now, um, I know you're not doing it for money, really. Just doing it because you love it. Just love it, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I've been the same too, just doing projects, writing projects, recording. Everything I do now is not for money anymore. It's just oh, I gave that up a long time ago. All the covers and stuff. It's it's fun, eh? It's because you love it. Well, the thing is, the thing is, you know, like back in back in the early days when you first started out, mm. you weren't doing it for money. You were doing it. You were doing it for yeah. fun. Yeah. You made it make, somewhere along the line. It turned somehow into money for me. It did anyway, and it became boring. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, you've done it for Sun and Kiwa for the hundredth time, and it's like, God. Yeah. So it just loses its novelty. When we were when we scored that gig at the Albert, once again, money didn't even come into it, but. Mm. We got paid 90 bucks a week each. Mm. And I was only earning 70 bucks a week at my normal job. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Shit, this is unreal. I earned more money too. Yeah. Rather than, I had a five day a week job, but mm. I earned more money yeah. working three nights a week doing music yeah. than I did yeah, and, back and in the day. So, oh, this is good. And um, plus, you know, you get a bit of, well, um, you know, self importance. And shit, you know. <laughs> And yeah. people recognise you in the street and, oh, you know, a little yeah. small <laughs> ball pond. You don't know who they are, actually. But yeah. It was quite funny, really. Like, um, I used to pretend I knew who they were, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and people would ask me for my phone number sometimes afterwards, so I'd, I'd have to change the digits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to do that a lot. Like, um, in our little village here, mm. um, we've got, they've just built a little swimming pool and a clubhouse. Mm. So we're gonna have a little opening yep. in a in a couple of weeks time and they've asked me to do a few songs. So gotta come up with a PA from somewhere and um, just do a few few songs, you know. Oh that'd be nice. But I won't be well I will be nervous, but just have a drink first. <laughs> it's it's not I'm more nervous in front of people that I know than 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 I don't know, you know? Yeah. So I know yeah. what you mean. I'm the same, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you think. Well, well, when I was ten years old, when I first started singing in front of people, you'd think, "Shit, that's sixty years ago. You should have overcome your shyness." But mm. I guess if you're born shy, you're born shy, aren't you? You know. Mm. And that's that. That was the difference. That was the difference between people say, "Oh, yeah, singer. Oh, yeah." They think you're an entertainer. Mm. I was not an entertainer, I was no. a singer. Yeah. There's a big difference. Yeah. So, you know, when Al, Al Campbell, when our band split up, he got called up to do quite a bit of stuff up in Auckland mm. and that for, for um, you know, like Shane and yep. Suzanne and all those yep. people. And and, um, and one day he said to me, he said, she just as you're just as good a singer and probably better than some of those buggers, you know. Mm. He said, but the difference is, they believe in themselves mm. and they're entertainers, mm. whereas you're a singer. I said, yeah, and that's all over. One of the bands wanted to be a singer, you know, mm. and I don't want to have to tell jokes and. Nah. Although when we were in the duo, because Mel was carrying the show, I was able to to do a little bit of, mm. you know. Of actually telling jokes or whatever you do, mm. you know, talking to the crowd, because mm. that's what it, I can sing to a crowd, but talking to them is a different story. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that, isn't it? 
And that was funny. <laughs> I just have to kind of act like a clown in some ways. I just turn my brain off. I find that's the easiest way. Because you know what? It's actually switching between that right and left brain too, I think. It's quite hard. Could, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and then you've got to switch back again. So if you can just stay in the part of the brain that zones out, I find that, for me, works the best. But the, once I get back into the logical side, is, is, it's is, hard to get back to the creative. Just switch, 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 switch. Although in the end, they sort of merge a bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think as you relax, to, really. as you relax, to. yeah. But um, anyway, yeah, four questions. Are you ready for your four questions? Four questions? Four questions. I'm going to ask you four questions. Four questions? Four questions. So the, f the questions I ask everyone. So the first question, your two favourite or just the ones that spring to mind that you really like, New Zealand artists or bands of any time? Lady does. Yes. Um... How, how many? Two. 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 Lady Dars. Oh. I can't think of the name. Okay, another one. <laughs> I can't think of the name. I know the, band. the formula. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. And two favourite New Zealand songs? Favourite New Zealand songs? Yep. Two of them. Two of them. Um, well, on top of the world, Lady does. Yep. And mm, probably out for Thursday, did he smash? Oh yeah, good one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you could go and see any artist or any band in the world, dead or alive, who would you go and see? <sighs> I know that if there's artists I wouldn't go across the road to see. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's artists thought about it, walk a while over broken glass to see, but just like that. Um, One of them anyway. You know, Boz Skaggs would, oh, yeah. always, would always, I'd, I'd like yeah. to know. Yeah, And uh, for the original line of a Fleetwood Mac, I'd oh, really like to see. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think of it with Neil on there now? I I can't imagine Fleetwood Mac without the original guy. Lindsay, yeah. Lindsay without Lindsay Buckingham. I just cannot imagine mm, it. That's great. But then I, I think Neil will do the job, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I know with a band day, eh? once someone like that goes, it's it's not the same. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like the Stones without Keith Richard or something, you know. It's, <laughs> it's just. Yeah, I know what you mean. Claim to fame for Rod Ruscott? Sorry? Claim to fame. Can be anything. Well, you know, last time I'm a car painter, and people used to see me singing, they say, geez, you're wasting your time, bloody car painting. Um, and then people would see some of the cars I've done, and they say, oh, you're wasting your time, bloody singing and all, and all then. <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether I'm a better. A better singer than a painter or a better painter than a singer. The highest score so far is nine. Oh, God. <laughs> but there's, there's lots of different scores in amongst that. So you have one minute starting from now for the letter D. Go. D. D. Um, bands. Yes. Oh, um, um, DD Smash. Uh-huh. Um, Dion, Dion and the Belmonts American Band. Yep. Um, D. And, oh, it's got to be bands, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, bands or artists, sorry. Oh, I got Donna Summer. Yep. Um, um, Girls on film. Hmm? Girls on film. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll be watching it, but do you think I can think of the bloody oh. name? Oh no. It's alright, keep going. I'll give you another five seconds. Yeah, I no, you got me. It's like watching that nine and ten, you know, after it's all over. Oh, you can reel them off like. Yeah, yeah. Five, uh, I'll give you ten more seconds. Yeah, and don't. Um, no. 
You got me. Okay, that's all right. You got four, so actually, that's all right. Did I get four? Yeah. yeah. You got four because you get two points for New Zealand one. Oh, okay. I can't remember what it was, but there was, oh, Dirty Smash. So New Zealand. Smash, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So that's all good. Okay. Um, oh, thanks for very much for coming on the show. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. My, my pleasure, yeah. This one that he really likes. He's actually on that. Yeah, he's very good. We put him on the end of the um on the end of the song, put him in the recording studio, but he couldn't hear anything. Oh. So he had to leave the door open a little bit and, and then he started singing, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. he's funny. You're a funny fellow, aren't you? Hey? Oh.